This week we're starting to look at fixing bugs in open source projects. Up until this point, you've been working on uh, creating pull requests to other students in the course, and we're gonna be transitioning into working against uh, projects that are hosted on GitHub by various companies and organizations. And I'm gonna, this week I'm gonna fix a couple of bugs and I'll try and do different kinds of bugs. So the one that I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how I would approach fixing a bug in a larger project that's run by a bigger organization. And so I'm purposely gonna pick something I've, I don't know uh, anything about. I haven't worked in this project before and I wanna use it as a chance to just discuss some of the things that, uh, some of the techniques you can use when you're trying to go into a project for the first time. So I saw this tweet and I thought this was a perfect uh, opportunity for me to try fixing something in uh, a project I've never worked with before. So this tweet is by John, who works at Microsoft, and he was tweeting about all the different repositories for the Azure SDKs that are available. So you can see that uh, Azure has SDKs, client SDKs, for people to work in all kinds of languages. If you're not familiar with Azure, uh, it's Microsoft's cloud, and uh, there are various courses you can take uh, here at Seneca for that, where people are working with Azure or teaching Azure, and probably some of you have already uh, worked with it in the past. So these, um, these SDKs are targeted to developers for particular languages. So if you are a Node or web developer, you would use the uh, JavaScript SDK. Similarly, you can obviously pick up something for... Ruby, iOS, Rust, Go, Python, whatever language you're gonna be working with. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm going to take a look at the JavaScript SDK because that's the primary language that I work in. And I wanna, I just wanna talk about how we might go about looking to do something in this repository. So the first thing you're gonna notice when you come to this repository is that it's pretty big. So you've got just about 10,000 commits on the repository. You'll see that they've done 1,100 different releases. You can see that there are almost 300 contributors. So we're moving from a project where you have a handful of developers into a scenario where you have hundreds of developers who are all collaborating inside this project. So this is a, a fairly big project. And if we look at the readme here, it tells us a little bit about it. So this repository is for the Azure SDK for Node and the browser, and it contains the management libraries for all of the Azure services and client libraries. And it goes on to talk about um, down here, the readme for each package contains code samples and package information. The readmes can be, can be found in the package folder under the folder of the service of your choice in the SDK folder of this repository. And so if we look up here at the SDK, you can see that, assuming it'll load, try again. We've got lots and lots of packages here. So this is a big repository. It's got lots and lots of little pieces that are all inside it. And um, so your first thought when you see something like this is you might say, um, this, is, this isn't a good idea. This is too big and I, I can't make an impact here. It's unlikely that I'm gonna be able to do anything useful because I don't know any of this code. I don't have time to learn it all, etc. So let's see how far we can go when, we, when, when that is true. I don't know this code. I haven't worked on this team before. Nobody has invited me to come and work here. I'm just gonna show up and I'm gonna get involved. So let's see, let's see what that looks like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the issues and there's currently 837 of them filed. And that's a lot. And again, a lot is not necessarily a bad thing. A lot means that there is a great diversity of things that you could work on. So the bigger the project, the more surface area there is to get involved. The more issues that are on file, the more that things have been broken up into small manageable pieces that maybe you could get engaged with. 
So when I come to a project like this, the first thing that I'm gonna do if I'm brand new to a project is I'm gonna see whether or not if I click on their labels, if I can find a label for a particular uh, issue that would fit me. You'll notice that a lot of these issues already have labels on them. You can see these colored bubbles. So they have different labels that they're putting on here to indicate that this issue is related to a particular part of the code or a particular part of the project. One of the labels that I think is useful to use is the good first issue label. Now, good first issue isn't always going to be helpful. Some projects don't use it at all. Other projects use it and it tends to be oversubscribed. So people who come to the project, it's the first place they go and you know it doesn't work. But let's see what's happening in this project. So when I open up the good first issue, I can see that there are 18 open and 30 closed issues. And if I scroll down through the list of these here, you can see that there's quite a few of them. And what I would recommend that you do, what you should consider is that you might wanna change the way that you sort it. So one thing you could do is you could say, um, I wanna see the ones that have the least amount of commenting. In other words, I don't wanna to go to like some of these, for example, there's quite a bit of discussion happening on this one. And so that might not be a good place for me to go because there's already a bunch of work going on there. That's not always the case, but if, if you're looking for a filter that you can apply, Another thing you might want to do is you might want to look at um, issues that are assigned to nobody. So I'm going to click on nobody and that limits my list even more. So now I have seven and here are the issues that are available. So the one that I'm going to work on right now is this one. Some packages check format command is not using prettier configs. So I actually have this issue open right here. And I think this is actually gonna be a manageable issue for me. So let's take a look at what it says. Some of the packages are using check format and format these commands, but they're not using the prettier configs. So a little bit of backstory on what this bug is about. If you aren't aware of it, prettier is a very popular tool for allowing you to format source code in a consistent way. In fact, we have a case study that we're gonna do in a couple of weeks where we're gonna look at Prettier and using um, standard formatting in open source projects. So just to give you a sense of what it looks like, if I click on the playground for Prettier, you'll see that I have two different tabs here. I've got, or two different parts of the screen. So on the left, I have a bunch of code which is just randomly uh, put in here. It doesn't have good indenting. It's missing things like semicolons, it's missing spaces, it's, it's just all jammed together, it's a mess. On the right, you can see that Prettier has taken this code and it has formatted it. It has literally made it prettier. But more than that, it's made it standard. So that when everyone in the project looks at it, they're, gonna all, they're all gonna see the same thing. So we said that this project um, has a lot of developers working on it, you know, hundreds of developers working on this project. And when you have a lot of people working on a project, you don't want to have differences in the way that people format their code. You want to have a standard approach. Everyone does it the same way. Even if we don't all agree with it, it becomes the way that we do it. And that's what Prettier is doing here. So this bug is about the way that Prettier is being used in the project. So if we go to the docs, you'll see that there's a number of ways to work with Prettier from the command line. So the way that Prettier works is you call the Prettier command and then you give it certain flags. And so I'm interested, I wanna show you different flags that are available. So one of them that they're talking about is the check flag. Prettier check, when you want to check if your files are formatted, you can use prettier with the check flag and this will output a message that lists all of the um, unformatted files if there are any. So if any of the files need to be formatted, this is how you would do it. So there is check. There is also, if we look back at this bug, some packages check format and format commands are not using the prettier configs. So if you look at what uh, examples that are uh, showing here, you can see prettier is being called with list different as another example. So let's just look at what list different does. Uh, list different is going to print the file name 
or of the files that are different. If there are differences, the script errors out, which is useful in a CI scenario. So this is for running in an automation scenario where you want to have essentially a robot go through and check the code and tell you if anything is, is broken. Um, okay, so looking at this bug again, some packages are not using the prettier configs. Prettier config. So let's talk about what that means. So if we look at the docs for prettier, one of the things that you can do is you can provide a configuration file. So Prettier uses or has configuration file support. That means that you can configure Prettier using one of these different things. So one of the things you can do is you can put a .prettierrc JSON file in the root of your project and it will use that file. And the way that you structure this file is you specify some of the things that you want. For example, do you want to have semicolons? Do you care about um, single quotes or double quotes? Do you want to have four spaces or two spaces for your indents? So if we take a look at this project in the root directory of the project, you can see that there actually is a prettier.json file. And it says, for example, that all lines have to be formatted to a maximum of 100 characters. You have to use semi semicolons, two spaces for indents, etc. So the configuration has been defined in this file and what they want is they want all of the different places in the um, source, they want them to use this configuration file. So instead of using the defaults that Prettier has, the defaults I think are um, this, they want to use, they want to override some of the defaults. So we need to be able to make sure that that's working. And according to this, some of these aren't, aren't doing what they're supposed to do. They should be working with a config file. So how do you work with this config file? If we go back to the docs and we look at the CLI and we look at the options that you can pass to the CLI, um, here it is, config. So you can pass in find config path or dash dash config. And so here's an example, prettier config, prettier RC, and then you do your command. So if you specify that you want to use a particular config file, then prettier will override the defaults and it will use that for what it's doing. Okay, so if I was going to fix a bug like this, First of all, I have to find it. So we've found us, ourselves a bug. We found a bug that says good first issue. We found a bug where they've indicated they want help, help wanted. And you can see that this bug has been around for a while. So it was filed on June 16th and the um, extra labels were added on July 26th. Since then, nobody's touched it. So in theory, this is still open and I could go and work on it, but I should do a little bit of work to figure out whether this bug even exists anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do an experiment to look and see. Let me just change my view here. I'm going to do an experiment to see whether or not this, uh, this bug still exists in the code. Because one of the things that can happen when you're working on a big project like this is that you know, it's been since July 26th, maybe things have changed. So let's take a look and see what's going on right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the period on my keyboard, which is going to turn my, you know, my GitHub view into an editor view. Choose what you want. I don't want to do this. Uh, how do I get out of this? Okay. I don't want extensions for now. I just want to go and browse through the code. So here's what I want to do. I want to look at these files and I want to see what's going on. So I'm going to, if you go to the go menu and you go to um, go to file on a Mac, that is command and P. I think on Windows it's control and P. So if I'm over here and I do command P, I get this little pop up that lets me type in the name of a file. So I'm going to say core util slash package.json like this. 
And what I'm interested in is, I'm interested to look at these scripts and I wanna look at check format and I wanna see whether or not they specify a config. So you see over here they didn't, but you can see that now they do. So right here the config has been specified and you can see they've also specified it down here for prettier.json. You can see that they've also specified an ignore path. So another thing that you can do with prettier is you can specify a path to a file called dot prettier ignore. Dot prettier ignore. I can actually look at dot pretty ignore over here. Uh, here it is. And it's a list of all of the files or file paths that prettier should ignore when it's looking, when it's going through and looking at these things. So you can see in this file they are correctly specifying. We want to go up, 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 up to prettier.json and up, 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 up to prettier ignore. And they're doing that in both cases. Okay, so strike one for these two. These two are okay. So how about this one, client package? So we go here, client package. Uh, what have I done wrong? No, core client, sorry, core client package.json. Here it is here. We look at check format and you can see that the config has been defined and it's been defined down here as well. So these two are now okay. Core rest pipeline, let's try that. Here, again, this isn't looking good. It's looking good for Azure, it's not looking good for me. So here you can see that the config has been uh, defined, so no luck there. Next one on the list is core XML. Yep, it's done. Uh, core client rest. Core client rest under check format, it's done. <laughs> okay, this may be a quick one to solve. And crypto. Core crypto package.json. Also done. Okay, there's only one left. Identity. Identity slash test manual package.json. Here it is here. And okay, success. So this one is still not correct. This one still is not, has not been done. So I can actually do something on this bug. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do on this bug then is I'm going to communicate my intention that I'd like to work on this. And I'm going to leave a comment. So, Sometimes what I will do before I leave a comment and sign myself up for something is I will spend an hour just seeing if I could fix the bug. So rather than um, rather than commit to something that you know what after an hour of this I don't really I don't really want to fight with this code or this bug or this isn't what I'm actually looking for I can just give up and I can walk away and no harm done. In this case, I've sort of done that. I've gone through and I've looked to confirm, okay, yes, I could actually make some changes here. There are, There is still a problem that I could work on. So you can make a decision. Now, if you do sign up for a bug, remember that you can always indicate later that you aren't working on it. You know what, I, tr I started to work on this, but I got busy with school, or I'm no longer able to do this if somebody else wants to take it. You're not on the hook to do this. You're just indicating that you'd like to give it a try. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to leave a note and I'm going to say, um, I'd like to try this. And I'm also going to indicate that I only see one of the files, this file here. Um, So here's the information that I have. 
Um, I've confirmed that only one of them is still problematic and I will also just take a look and see if there's anyone else that I should do here. And I'm gonna click on comment. Okay, so now I've been added to this. I'm a participant in this and you can see that my comment has been added into, into the bug. Okay, so the next step for me is that I need to, uh, I need to fork this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and um, I'm gonna make a copy of this for myself. So I'm gonna fork the repo. I'll fork it into my personal. Personal account. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull down the repo locally. So I'm gonna git clone my fork of this. So while that's happening, what I want to do now is I want to prepare myself to be able to work on this code. So when you go to a project like this, a couple of conventions that you will, you will run across. The first thing is that you will see the readme. The readme is often going to be aimed at users. Not always, but often. It, it's not usually aimed at developers. So the developer documentation is usually going to be stored in a different file. And if I scroll down, there'll probably be a, a link to it. So you see that there is a section down here called contributing. And it says, if you want to contribute, go to the contributing guide. And up here, you can see that there is often a file called contributing.md. And if I click on contributing.md, this is the readme file for developers. So my, uh, my repo has finished cloning. Okay. So in here, it talks about getting involved in the project. The project welcomes contributors and, and uh, suggestions. Most contributors or contributions rather require you to agree to a contributor license agreement. So this is something that you're gonna run into on certain projects, often projects that are run by large companies. And what they will do is they will set out a uh, an agreement with any developer who submits code and it specifies what's gonna happen with copyright and just sets out the terms of what's going on when you contribute some piece of code into a product or into a project that's gonna be used as part of some commercial product. So we'll come back to this later. Um, down here, how to contribute to this code. You can submit a bug, you can submit code for a bug fix, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it says the project uses Rush, which I've never heard of. Rush makes life easier for JavaScript developers who build and publish many packages from a common Git repo. Uh, Rush is a scalable mono repo manager for the web. Okay, this is interesting. So what we have here with this project is we have lots of small pieces that have all been put into a larger repository. There are two common ways that people manage this. When you have a big project and you have dozens or hundreds or thousands of small sub projects, what some people will do is they will create individual little repositories and other projects, what they will do is they will create one gigantic mono repo. And so it looks like Microsoft has developed or someone is using Microsoft is using a tool to help them manage this. And this is to do things like installing and sharing dependencies and being able to um, work on the whole project, but have the project be broken up into smaller pieces. Okay, so it gives a bunch of information that I'm not gonna go through at the moment. Setting up your environment. Now this is a really important one. These projects will usually list information about what you need to use in order to write code and run the code, build the code, etc. And it's important to make sure that you pay attention to things like versions. So when you go into some of these things, you're going to run into situations where they'll say, you need this version of Node, or you need this version of Python, or you have to have this command line tool installed, or whatever it is. And so it's really important that you get your environment set up and not just assume that whatever's on your laptop will do it. So we love Visual Studio Code, so do I, so that's great. Uh, prerequisites, you need to have Git, I have Git. You need to have an LTS version of Node. Um, 
Okay, I'm currently on node 14, 17, that should be fine. So it says you need to have a C++ compiler to tool chain in Python. And if you're on Mac, which I am, you can install the Xcode command line tools. I have all of that installed already on my machine. If you're on Windows, you need to install Python 3.9 and the Visual Studio build tools, etc. On Linux, you need to install these. Then you need to install Rush um, onto your machine and it suggests installing it globally. Uh, so let's do that. So I'm gonna npm install dash g, meaning inst install it globally. Install Rush. Rush will automatically manage the specific version needed by this repo. If you're unable to install it globally, typically I don't install on things globally, but I will do it in this case. So then it says fork the repo, we've done that. Clone the repo, we've done that. Open a terminal and go into this directory, we've done that. And then we can build the packages managed by Rush, and we do that by saying Rush update. Okay install and link all dependencies, and then we build it with rush build. So rush update to install all the dependencies. So I guess this is one of the benefits here already of having rush is that it's going to take care of installing all of the sub pieces in the project for me. And so I think what I'm gonna do is I'll pause this while I run these two commands so that you don't have to wait uh, while they complete because it could take some time. Okay, rush is installed. I'm gonna do rush update and it's gonna install a different version of Rush to match what's in the repo. And then I guess it's gonna install all of these dependencies. Here it goes. So it's starting to install all the different dependencies. And again, I'll pause this and come back when it's finished. All right, that finished installing everything. And out of curiosity, Okay, so it's, I have a lot of stuff there now, 1.2 gigabytes of data inside this directory now with all the things that it's installed. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build the code base. And so I'll run brush build. And I assume this is gonna take a while, building one of 123. So <laughs> once again, I will not make you sit through this. Okay, 12 minutes later and <laughs> we're in business. So the build has finished and we're ready to keep going. So we've done update to install the dependencies. We've done build to build all of the uh, packages in the monorepo. And then it also says, if you wanna build other packages not managed by Rush, navigate into those and then call npm install and npm run build on your own. So that implies that there are some pieces of this tree that I may have to go in and do something with manually, but I don't really know what that is. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dig around and try and find that. Um, installing and managing dependencies. We're not really gonna be adding new dependencies. Um, dependency conflicts, building. We've already done testing. I kind of want to run tests, but I'm interested in running. Okay, this is interesting. So other NPM scripts. So most package scripts are exposed to Rush as commands. You can use Rush X script name in place of NPM run script name. Um, you can use Rush script name, and then there are all of these different ones. So for example, there is Rush check format. So that's actually a logical place to start rush check format so one of 123 um, packages in the monorepo it's going through each one and it looks like it is able to call um, it's able to call the check format script for each one of these so the reason I'm interested in doing this before you make changes to a repository, before you change the code, before you run the tests, looks like that failed. Um, 
what you want to do is you want to first set a baseline. So before I make any changes to anything, I want to understand what is the current state of this code. And for example, are things breaking? Now look here, I haven't changed anything yet and already there's a failure. So one of the project failed the core rest pipeline module or package is not working. It says it's invoking this and it's listing this file here, tsdocmetadata.json. So it says it's failed. So I'm glad I did this because now I know that there's actually some other problem. I didn't introduce this problem. And so I can try and figure out what's going on here. So let's actually, let's get into this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up um, Visual Studio so that uh, later. And no, thank you. Um, okay, so it says this file, tsdocmetadata.json, tsdoc uh, metadata.json doesn't come up in the list. Hmm. not coming up in the list of files seen by this. So where does it think it is? It's in core rest pipeline. CD SDK core, is that where it would be? Core, core rest pipeline. Um, here it is here, TS doc metadata.json. So there is a file here, tsdocmetadata.json. And okay, so I think probably the reason this thing is breaking is because this is not a valid JSON file. Um, you're not allowed to put comments in. <laughs> That's one of the terrible choices of JSON, but it's the way it is. You're not allowed to put comments inside of one of these files. So it's interesting that it's not coming up over here. So let's just go take a look. Um, if I look inside of the TS doc metadata.json, it looks like it comes up a couple of times in issues. Um, remove, okay, so here is a pull request. This isn't something we want. And um, this PR removes it from being checked into the core rest pipeline and adds it to git ignore. So that's interesting. So that means that over here, the git ignore file, ts doc, here it is here. So you can see that it's been added as a, under the list of build artifacts here, it's been added as one of the generated files. So I wonder if what I should do is add this file as well to the prettier ignore over here. Um, probably that's what I'm going to do. But before I do any, before I do that, I'm going to check out a branch for the work that I'm about to do. So currently I'm working on. Um, what is, let me find my issue again. So if I go to issues and I go to labels, good first issue, and I go to um, this one here. So this is issue number 15772. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a branch issue 15772 and I'll do all my changes on here. So on this branch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add, um, no, so go to git ignore, where is it here? I'm gonna take this and I'm going to stick this into prettier ignore as well, because I don't believe, to me it seems odd. It seems odd that it would, um, be in git ignore but not in pretty or ignore because it's a generated file it's not a source file so i'm going to rerun this and see 
see what happens. Again, I'll pause. Okay, so we I've made it further this time. Uh, I now have two more projects that are failing, but the one that was failing is no longer failing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look. Um, the change that I've made so far is I added TSDoc metadata to the, um, I added it to the Pretty or Ignore. So before I go any further, I'm gonna package this up as a commit. So I'm going to um, git add dot prettier ignore and I'm going to commit and I'm going to say add ts doc metadata dot json to, to prettier ignore and I'm going to reference this um, 14, 14681 um, c14681 and I'm going to say, I'm going to do this for um, the one that was failing was this pipeline. So I'm going to add this to this for this. Okay, so I've got one change. Now the next problem that we have here is it says Azure tests perf container registry. So perf container registry package.json. So in this file, we have a check format and it's saying over here, it says invalid configuration file test client spec. So that seems odd. So here it says to check the format and use this config, prettierrc.json. So it says up, up, up. So where are we? So we are in uh, package.json. If we go, we're in container registry. So one, two, three. So if I'm, let me just, let's just try this. So if I copy, um, copy this path and I'm going to go here. So if I say um, CD one, two, three, where does that put me? puts me in the SDK directory. So it looks like what's happened here is the check format is one level off. It needs to go one higher. And the same thing for the ignore file. And probably the same thing for format. Yep, so this one here is one higher and one higher. So let's save that and let's try it again. Uh, rush, I guess I gotta go up one level. Rush, check format, and I'll let this run and I'll be back in a second. Okay, that finished and that one has been fixed. I still have one more to do here. So let's, um, so what did I change? I changed this one file and the change that I made is that I have basically I've added one more level to these paths for to get to the prettier config. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another commit. So I'm going to add um, if, if I look at git status, you can see that the only thing that's changed is something inside SDK. So to save myself from having to type a whole lot, I'm just gonna say git add SDK. And what that will do is it'll just add that one file. So I don't have to type out the entire path. I would um, suggest that you don't use git add dash A because often there'll be generated files or there'll be files that you don't intend to add and you'll have this big list of files that you don't want. So you gotta be a little bit careful, but I've added this file and I'll say that I want to make a commit and I'll say, um, 
uh, fix path paths to prettier um, rc.json and dot prettier ignore in uh, what is the name of this module? This was Azure Tools Testing. No, perf. What is this? Tools. This is perf container registry package.json. So if you look at my log right now, you can see that so far I've got two commits, two different things that I've done, and I'm slowly making changes. And every time I'm making some change and I'm getting a little bit further, then what I'm doing is um, I'm adding a commit. Okay, let's take a look at this last failure. So it says, invoking prettier inside Azure Tools testing recorder new is failing, and it's listing this file right here. Okay, so testing recorder new. So if let's try going in there. So if I go into SDK, um, does this exist? No. Um, where is this file? Test utils. Okay, CD test utils. Okay, so the file that's failing is this rollup. Let's let's look at the package.config. Um, package.json, when you run the script, so it does have check format. So what if I just call check format here? npm run check format. It runs in this directory and it says that rollup base config.js is a problem. In other words, it needs to be formatted. So there's a there is an issue. Um, so this is in testing recorder new um, rollup base config js. So this file probably somebody's made a change in here, but they haven't run prettier on it. And now this is saying there's something that needs to be changed. Okay, well let's just run. Let's just, so one of the things I can do is I can just tell prettier to format this thing. So if I call the format command, npm run format, it goes through, and I don't know if you can see this on the video, but all of these are sort of light gray. It hasn't done anything, but when it gets to this one, it's made some changes. This one's darker. And if I say git diff, you can see that, okay, yeah, it has made a change. So it has, taken something that was on three lines, and now it's doing it just on one line. Okay, so let's um, let's rerun this. Um, whoops, Azure rush check format. I'll let you know when it ends. All right, that has worked. So now it has been able to get through the check format for the entire repository. All of the um, packages have been checked. And I guess all that's left is to add that one change that we just did. So the change is we had prettier reformat this one file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more commit. I'm gonna add SDK and I'm gonna make a commit. And I will say um, run prettier with um, on this file. On this file. Okay. So at this point, we've got three changes and we're, <laughs> we're ready to start this bug. So I now have the ability to like actually start working on the thing that I wanted to do from the beginning. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to, um,
I need to make a change to, I need to basically find anywhere that hasn't got this in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my, I'm gonna use my search to do this. So I'm looking for all the places that prettier is called. And I'm looking for everywhere to see if they have a config. So you notice that, for example, this one does, this one does not. So this one is interesting. Most of these have it. If I go through, how many of these need it? Config, config, config. Okay, this one doesn't need it. Sorry, this one needs it here in identity. So I need it here. It's done almost everywhere. All the way down. So there's only two places where it's not done. So one of them is in this file and one of them is in this file. So why don't I start with this one? So here we've got a format and we have write, but we don't have the ability to check the format. So why don't we just take one of these ones that does it the way we want. So let's start with format. So if I take this and I'm gonna copy it over here and I'll just use this as a basis. So we're gonna call write, but then we need to put in a config and an ignore path I need these two things here, and I'm gonna stick that like so. So we can get rid of this. Now let's make sure that we have the, uh, let's copy this path, and let's jump out here and go to the path. So if we go up, one, two, three, four, where does that land us? CD one, two, three, four. I gotta go up one more. I gotta go up. Five. Like that. And while we're in here, we might as well, like everybody else has a check format, which looks like, which uses list different. So let's just do the same thing. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna add check format and it's going to use the same config, the same ignore path and the same um, list of files. So let's just make sure I've done this correctly. Um, okay, it's not happy with me. What did I do wrong? Oh, I'm missing a quote. Okay. So now I have a check format inside this directory. So let's let's go back to it. Copy path. And what if I say npm run check format. So it says prettier is not found but prettier is in the list of dependencies. So maybe node modules is not here. So the dependencies haven't been installed. So probably this is a, a module where Rush is not doing it. So what I'll do is I'll install those dependencies and then I should be able to run, uh, should be able to run prettier on that. Okay, so that finished installing, so let's try running it again. So I should be able to do npm check format. Whoops, npm run. 
and it fails because this file needs to be reformatted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say npm run format so that it can run prettier on this file and reformat it. And so um, you can see that not only have I changed the package.json file, so I've added a check format and a format which are using the um, configs and the config and the ignore file from above. But you can see that Prettier has also reformatted this file. So it's done things like instead of putting this in multiple lines, it's done it in a single line. You can see that it's added a comma right here. You can see that it's changed the way that this gets indented and some of the spacing and things in here. So that's great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another commit. So I'm gonna add package.json and source index.tsx. I'll add both of these files because they kind of go together now. Like, um, and I'm gonna commit and I'll say use um, prettier config and ignore for um, I guess this is for the stuff in this directory. Um, okay, so I have another, another one of these done. So the only thing I have left, there was one other place that needed this, one other place that didn't have the config. What was it? It's this one right here, common tools, ESLint. Let's go take a look at this one. Okay, so you can see that there's a format and there's a check format, and it's a little bit different than the other one. So if you look at this one, you can see that check format is doing prettier list different and this one is doing prettier check. So I wonder, probably what I should do is be, all the rest of these are using uh, list different. So I wonder if what I should do is use that. So I'm gonna grab the config and the ignore path, like so. And I'm gonna put that in here. And I think, that I don't need to be so deep. I think that for this one, I can take off one of, I think I only need one, two, three of these. One, two, three. So here I need to also put in this config and the ignore for the, um, for the format command. So let's just see if that works. So I should be able to go to this directory, copy this path, and I should be able to say npm run check format and it works. And nothing came back, um, nothing came back as a problem. So I should also be able to run um, the format script and because nothing was found to be a problem, it shouldn't change anything, but it should work. And you can see it going through all the files, but it's not changing any of those files, the only file that's been changed is the one that I just did right here. So let's make another commit. Git commit dash, oh, I gotta add this file first. Git status, um, git add package.json, git commit, and I'll say use global um, prettier config and ignore in, um, this directory. Oh, 
Okay. So now I've got one, two, three, four, <clears throat> five commits. Uh, five commits that I've changed. And what I should be able to do at this point is I should be able to rush check format. I should be able to run through the entire set of um, modules, packages, whatever the right term is here. And I should be able to check the formatting on all these. They should all pass based on the set of changes that I've just done. They should all be using the global config. And at this point, we can just, while this is working, you'll see that everything in here is now using the config. All of these format commands are using the config. And we could also check um, check format. You can see these are all basically the same now. I can't see any that are missing the config. All of them are using list different. So you've got consistency across all of the all the packages, these are all passing. Perfect. So everything has, everything has worked. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to push this branch, which has my five commits, um, and I'm gonna push that up to my repository, up to my fork. So I'm gonna push to my uh, push issue 15772, 15772, I'm gonna push that to my origin. Whoops, does not appear to be git push. Uh, what have I done wrong? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Git push origin this branch. Okay, so I push my branch up and it says, if you wanna create a pull request, you can visit this URL right here. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna to go to this, whoops. I'm gonna to go to this URL like so, and I'll open up a new window so that um, I can put this in. Okay, so this is my first pull request here. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I go to fix a pull request is I'm gonna take a look at what it is I'm actually sending because I'm sending up lots of things here. So you can see all five of my commits are here and you can see that they've all been put together into one, into one diff, into one um, set of changes. So the first thing I did was I added tsdocmetadata.json to pretty or ignore. And then you can see I made changes to a bunch of different package.json's to either add the config information or to fix the paths or to add check format so that it was doing the right thing. And you'll see that I've also got a couple of places where I'm changing the style of the files in order to match what should go there. So when I look at the changes that are going into this pull request, I'm, I wanna be really careful that I'm not sending anything that is unexpected. So maybe I accidentally added some other files or another change that I didn't mean to. This is the time where I could get rid of them. I could pull them out. You can do it later too, but it's nice if you spend a few minutes and just look through what you're doing here and make sure that you're happy with everything that's, that's going in. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a proper title. So in this case, my original um, issue was some packages check format and format commands are not using the prettier configs. So I'm gonna say use um, uh, global 
prettier config and ignore for all um, check and check format scripts. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I pay attention to this number. So this 1572, 15772, I'm going to start off by telling GitHub as well as the uh, people reading this, I'm going to say this fixes number 15772. I'm going to do this because I want to automatically link this pull request and the issue together so that when this gets closed, it will automatically close the issue as well. I've um, added config and ignore um, flags to all the um, check and uh, Actually, what is it? It's format and check format scripts. I've also fixed a number of related issues that I encountered uh, during the work. So then I'm gonna specifically say everything that I did. So the first thing that I had to do was um, I had to add um, ts doc metadata dot json to prettier ignore so that uh, rush could pass on what was the um, could pass for this one. And then inside here, I reference this, copy this. So I'm gonna say, um, but I'm also gonna say, let me know with this. I've also fixed a number of related issues that I encountered during the work. Please let me know if you want any of these removed. So that was the first one. The second one was to fix um, So I, <clears throat> excuse me, I fixed the paths. I added check format to this one. To this file. What else did we do? I guess the other thing that we did was Oh yeah, this one here we changed check. Um that was inside plugin Azure SDK. Um, to list different and I guess the last thing we did was um, 
on a few files that were failing uh, when checked with these new with um, Okay, so let's just make sure we've set everything. So we're fixing, and you can preview what it's gonna look like. So we're fixing this issue. We've added config and ignore flags to all of the format and check format scripts um, that we're missing them. I've also fixed a number of related issues that I encountered during the work. I'm just gonna during the work, um, uh, check please let me know if you wanted these removed. I had to add this to the pretty ignore so that it would pass. I fixed the paths in here. I added check format. I change this and then I guess um, if I've missed any other locations it looks to me like I've got them all but I'm new to this code okay so here's everything that I did here are the specifics of the changes. Here's why I made the changes that I made. And please review this code and let me know if there's anything that I can improve because you know I think I've done this right, but I'm sure when they look at this, they're gonna tell me that some of the things that I've done are wrong, or they're gonna say, this looks good, but can you change it to some other way? Or they're gonna say, you missed these other two things, which you know they need to have the same thing, same thing added. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the pull request. It's going to go from my issue 15772 up to the main Azure SDK for JS against their main branch, which is exactly what I want. So I'll click on create pull request and let that go. And you'll see that automatically what it's done is it's pulled in a whole bunch of reviewers, people who can look at this. And the Microsoft bot says, thank you for your contribution. We will review this pull request and get back to you soon. And the last thing that it says is, thank you for your submission. We really appreciate it. Like many open source projects, we ask that you sign our contributor license agreement before we do it, before we can accept your contribution. So what I'll do is I will, I'll sign this and then come back. I won't do it on camera. I'll just do it on my own. But when you are gonna send in a pull request to a, one of these projects, one of these bigger projects, this is often a step that you're gonna have to go through. Anyway, I'll pause it here and we can look at what happens in uh, GitHub with this later on through, uh, through the week.